Hi friends, it's Monday. Uh, glad to, to be able to come into your home and, and hopefully encourage you. I've been, uh, been reading through the Bible this year and uh, today, this morning, I was reading through uh, 1 Kings uh, chapter 12. And where we're at now, uh, the kingdom of Israel is being passed from father to son. The father being King Solomon, who was a really well-known king. You probably heard of him. He was really wealthy. He was really wise. He kind of burned out uh, at the end of his life and started worshiping uh, other gods. But he passes the kingdom on to his son, Rehoboam. And here's, what's ha here's what happens with Rehoboam. Uh, the, the people of, of the nation of Israel, they come to him and they say, Your father was was hard on us. He worked us hard. Uh, your father was, was hard on us. He taxed us greatly. If you would show us a bit of relief, we will follow you all our days. And Rehoboam says something that's, that's kind of smart. He says, uh, give me three days. Let me go away and think about it for three days. And then I'll come back and I'll give you my answer. So he 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 uh, he goes away, and he asks the the elders, his father's generation, the older counselors. He asks for them uh, to speak into his life, and the older the older counselors say, "You should do what the nation has asked." And you're a young king, uh, you know you're you're precariously sort of positioned as king. Uh, you should do what they say or what they've requested and they will follow you for a lifetime. But the Bible says that he rejects the counsel of the elders. And here's what it says specifically. It says, But Rehoboam rejected the advice of the elders and instead asked the opinion of the young men who had grown up with him and who were now his advisors. What is your advice? He asked them. How should I answer these people who want me to lighten the burdens imposed by my father? And, and his young friend said, oh no, like turn the screws more tightly. I got a cat here. I'm trying to get rid of Turn the screws more tightly. Um, like make it harder on them. Show them who's boss. Give them heck, you know. And, and Rehoboam rejected the advice of the sound counselors, the, the, the elders, and instead, he followed the advice of the buddies that he'd gone to high school with, like his contemporaries. And, and that was a fateful day. If you read the rest of the story, from that point on, the nation of Israel was divided into uh, the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom. Uh, Rehoboam, uh, at that, from that point on, only had one of the 12 tribes following him. It was a fateful day day. And what happened on that day? He listened to counsel, but not the right counsel. Now in this day, uh, during this, this, this time of quarantine, uh, we have a lot of people speaking into our lives. I just want you to contemplate for a moment in isolation. Who is your counselor? Who is giving you advice? Who is speaking into your life? I, I, I thought of some, some different possibilities. Uh, per perhaps uh, perhaps TV, you know, and, and, and depending on what you're watching or which channel you're watching, you know, you may, maybe, maybe you're getting advice to go this direction or maybe you're getting advice to go that direction. Maybe you're watching, um, I'm sorry, maybe, you're, maybe you are reading uh, scripture every day and, and maybe you're finding your counsel there. That's awesome. But we actually do need real life uh, people speaking into our lives as well. Who has the most influence over you? Who has the most sway over you? I mean, in isolation, it's hard to get uh, sound advice from any human being, right? Maybe the, 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 your family members, the people. There we go. In your uh, <laughs> in in your in your home, maybe they're speaking in your life. Uh, uh, another place, maybe maybe where you're finding counsel, although you don't mean. Uh, for this to be sound counsel, but it's just it's speaking your life, and that is your phone, right? Uh, there's this thing on your phone, probably. It's embarrassing. I'm not going to show you mine, but you you uh, 
manipulates your screen and all of a sudden you have this thing called uh, screen time right screen time and I'm not going to tell you what mine is but the point is during this time this period where you have some time on your hands you're being influenced uh, you're being influenced by your phone and how's that working out for you you're being influenced by TV by the by the books you read uh, but what I want to encourage you to think on is the real life people that are speaking in your life who are they right now Boy, there are there are ways that you can seek uh, real life counsel right now. Uh, the, the church, River Church, we've we've provided many opportunities online. Been working hard to to do that, where you can not just watch videos, but where you can through different uh, platforms you can interact with people, um, with Bible studies and, and prayer times, uh, and, and and then you can just call up a friend. But let me ask you, like, if you were going to call a friend right now, who would that friend be? Is that friend more like the, 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 the wise counselors whose advice uh, Rehoboam rejected? Are, are those the kind of people that you have in speaking in your life? Older, seasoned, wise men and women? Or do you have like your drinking buddies and your high school friends? Are they the ones that are speaking in your life? If those are primarily the kind of people that are speaking in your life, then you're on a road to, it's a harsh word, but maybe destruction. Like you're going to make unwise decisions that, that maybe will influence you, uh, your life for the rest of your life. So, so just be thinking. You get to decide who speaks into your life. You get to decide uh, who's going to have sway, influence over your life. You get to. I, I don't make that decision for you. You get to. But, but have you thought it through? Or are you just like, go wherever the wind blows? Like, have you actually thought about, like, I'm hanging around with this guy. I'm hanging around with this lady. She actually... She has permission to speak into my life. Do I really want that? Is this a person who I want to speak into my life? Is she a good influence? A good influence? Is he a good counselor? There's a there's a an interesting proverb that I'll read. It's Proverbs um, eleven. I think it's eleven. Let's see. 27.6, actually, and it says this. My glasses are fogging up in the, in the, in the dampness. Proverbs 11.26 says this. Wounds from a sincere friend are, are better than many kisses from an enemy. People that really have your back, that, that, that really... Uh, have your best interest at heart. Sometimes they're going to say things that, that feel like a wound. Like, I didn't want to hear that. That hurt. But you know what? It's it, it, at times. Done in love, it's, it's good for you. I can't tell you how many people I've known who, who received hard advice from a friend. It was hard. It, it hurt a little bit. And, and, and so they rejected it. Instead, they, they, they sought the kisses of their enemies. I mean, you're going to find somebody in this life that's going to tell you that what you're doing is okay. If you just look long enough, anybody, you'll, somebody will tell you, like, hey, man, what you're doing is A-okay. But, but on the other hand, what if you found a, a faithful friend who, who really, really told you the truth? Do you have a friend like that who really tells you the truth? Are, are you diving into... God's Word on a regular basis, looking for, for the real truth. I want to tell you a, a, a way you can do that. Uh, I've already said this, but a way you can do that is, is through joining our, our, our gospel communities and our, our Bible studies uh, online, uh, riverchurchrgv.com. You, you know about that. We've got an online calendar and we've got opportunities and you can contact us via email and we'll get you more plugged in and more connected these are these are crucial days i mean is is this is this your counselor if so uh, there's there are better opportunities for you and i want to help you with that love you uh I, I really lydia and i really are praying for you on a regular basis we as a family are praying for you um one thing 
Uh, I sent an email this morning, but I just want to say this on, on this video as well. Uh, Easter, uh, our Easter celebration is coming up in just six days, and we've got a really, <clears throat> a really cool uh, service that we're planning, and we're starting to video pieces of it and putting it all together. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be fast and fun and and, <clears throat> and 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 deeply honoring to Jesus Christ and His His victory over over sin and death on the cross. It's going to be a cool Easter service. One of the things we're doing is we're asking you, everyone. Asking you to send in five to ten second videos that you make with your phone. Uh, turn your phone sideways and video you by yourself or you as a family saying, "Hey, River Church, uh, Happy Easter." We're going to put all those together and we're going to show them throughout the uh, the service on Sunday. It'll be a part of the video. You'll get to see yourself. You get to see all the other different River Church people, and it's just our way of of, of just coming together. Uh, and seeing each other's faces and just remembering, oh yeah, wonder how he's doing. Oh yeah, it's good to hear from that that family, and that'll be a cool opportunity on Easter. But we need those videos soon. We need them by Thursday. Uh, so uh, so so five to ten seconds. Make it with your phone. Email it to info at riverchurchrgv.com. Love you guys, and thanks for joining me. And thanks for inviting me into your home.